I froze. They all looked afraid. Oh man, I'm getting goosebumps. I don't know what's <laughs> going, I don't know what's about to happen. I turned my head slightly to the side and I saw a really messed up looking face pressed to the window with gaping eyes looking down at me. I screamed so fucking loud and it, and it bolted. My grandma called the police after I told her what happened and they found nothing. I went home after that and I've never been there during the night again. Yikes. First of all, I love the idea of being like, Come on, Jimmy, it's fine, we'll go into the forest. And Jimmy's like, but isn't it dark? She's like, oh, I can see fine enough that we won't die. It'll yeah, be we fine. won't die. Yeah. <laughs> We're not gonna die. Also, the visual of waking up to your cousins like nodding at the window and there's this fucking monster looking in, just staring down at like you. Like not knowing why they're scared. <laughs> <laughs> yep. I feel like for most of that, uh, I think it seems very much like ideas stolen from movies. However, that's a very... I don't believe the story, but it's a very good story because it's specific. Yes, right? I agree. Like, good, scary stories are specific. And that story was like, here's what took place, and here's the property, and I'm giving you an outline of what this looked like, and this is what I was doing. And I like that story. I don't believe it, but I like that story. That was a good one. I gave Animals you the getting, longest one, Jesse, so enjoy. Animals, oh, getting, geez, anim animals getting fucked up is like a big part of the skinwalker vibe yeah it's so weird like they always talk about how skinwalkers want to scare you but every time you find them and you're, or you scream loud enough they run away but it's also that yeah and, and again I, I guess you did scare them but then if they want to scare you and suck up your energy do they get like a real quick buzz it's like a five hour energy shot and they're out i don't i don't yeah, know i don't get it it makes me wonder if that goat in the pen didn't want to get caught because he had a really good life scaring the sheep at night and that's what he was feeding off it's a good gig that actually reminds me have you seen the movie the witch oh, yes that was such yes a good movie. that's actually a really cool movie yeah, yeah that's a fuck that's a that's a that's one scary goat and like that's what i'll say one of the only movies to do like old-timey talk and make it sound kind of natural yeah that's real that's real and there's dead babies in that movie too yeah. which is like another part of Great. the skinwalker legend so maybe that's Great. what it was and the 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 witch in it can like look like a hot woman yeah, so maybe that was just a, maybe they should have called that movie the Skinwalker. Just saying. Holy crap! That's yeah. it. The witch was a retelling of a Skinwalker happening, told through Christian eyes. Yeah. Boom. Oof. <laughs> okay. All right. Last story. Go for it, Jesse. Oh boy. Okay, you gave me a good one. <laughs> I decided to join my bestie Karen bestie. for a three-day stay at her grandmother's place on the res. Her grandmother lives near a place called Tuba City, Arizona, in the middle of nowhere but surrounded by rural homes. We go to college together, and I was kind of interested to know about Navajo tradition. The first day we stayed, it was pretty chill, nothing out of the ordinary, but then her grandma, not that old, around 67, thank around bless this girl 67. for saying... Around 67. Bless this girl for saying 67 is not that old. And she by, knows how to kiss ass. She's good. Am yeah. I even saying around 67? Like, it's a very specific number to say around for. She probably knows she's exactly 67 <laughs> and wants to just cast some doubt on it right, just in case right. grandma's reading. <laughs> she's being polite to grandma. I get that. Yeah. That's why she's like not that old because grandma is reading the story. Yeah. Uh, so that a stray dog came out of nowhere and wouldn't leave. To me, it did act kind of strange and ugly. It was kind of ugly looking. It acted kind of ugly looking. Yeah. Black shaggy coat. Looked like a mix between a German shepherd and a lab. That night we were watching a movie in the living room. So I guess... What she's saying is that the grandma was just like, there's a dog on the property? Is that what she's yeah, saying? Yeah, it looks like, like I can't get rid of this fucking dog, yeah. Yeah, she basically grandma said a stray dog came out of nowhere and wouldn't leave her leave her alone. Uh, I just feel like that's I feel like that's a weird transition. The first day we stayed was pretty chill. Nothing out of the ordinary. But then the grandma's like, there's a stray dog that showed up. <laughs> we gotta progress you gotta progress, you know, it's like a horror story, so you know, oh that's weird. There's a dog. I, I get it. It's just what a weird like the grandma's like, no, there's nothing weird happening, but then a dog showed up. Like, oh, okay, sure. Um, that night we were watching a movie in the living room, had big windows and looked out onto the front, the curtains wide open. Grandma was in the kitchen cooking dinner and we were watching a movie. Next to the window is a medium bookshelf where we kept the DVDs. Karen went to put a DVD back that we just watched, but she freaked out because that stray black dog was staring at us through the window standing on top of the wood box outside. Not something normal dogs do from my point of view, or hers. Usually, my dog, which is a house dog, scratches at the door to be let in. Res dogs aren't allowed, or res dogs aren't house dogs, and dogs inside houses are frowned upon in Navajo tradition, meant to protect the house the owner. The other dogs seem to stay away from this dog. Karen opened the door and yelled at it to get off that box! It ran off behind the shed. Cut time out. 
why is the grandma letting the stray dog just hang out? I guess because she has other dogs. I, is I mean, what like, I'm assuming if you have land, what I've so far. If you have like land, like what are you gonna do? I guess, you know? but it, I guess I, my my fear of being a dog owner, you know, in my past, was that this stray dog would cause problems with my other dogs. Right. You know what I mean? But I, diff- maybe it's different. Continue. Okay. I apologize. We went to Tuba City Can't to get it. some groceries. Can't handle Tuba yeah, City. Yeah, look. <laughs> Sounds like That's a brass Every time we superstore. say Tuba City, it's like... Brass I just want to put out, also, superstore. the actual text says, we went to, 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 to Tuba City. Oh, sorry. That's so my I, bad. <laughs> to, 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 Tuba I, I, City. You know, we went to, to Tuba City. <laughs> <laughs> to get some groceries. <laughs> <laughs> to get some groceries. <laughs> Came back to the house. The dog was nowhere to be seen. Nothing unusual. Grandma went to visit some people, so it was just Karen and I. About five o'clock, we heard someone trying to open the door. Both of us looked out since uh, there had been no car heard, no dogs barking. Looking out the living room window to the door, there was the dog trying to open the door with its paws. Two paws wrapped around a brass doorknob standing on its hind leg. That would freak my shit. <laughs> that's that's to- Seriously. Well, I don't know that I believe this story. <laughs> if I did see that, I you're right. That would be the scariest thing ever. If a dog was like, I'm trying to open this door. I would be like, no. <laughs> oh. I would like hit the door. That's what I would do. I, or I'd invite the dog in and be like, bro, can you talk? <laughs> Are you a talking dog? You just open that door and you'd be like, ah, oh, yes, I can open doors now, Jesse. <laughs> I, uh, I'd be so thrilled. I have a friend. I have a new best friend. I have a friend. This is like the worst sourcing for a story ever but i have a friend who had a childhood friend who, <laughs> who swore who swore up and down for the rest of his life that one day he was sitting on the porch with his dog and like another guy and the dog was just like sup guys <laughs> <laughs> how high was this guy at the time? Like, i don't know <laughs> and I can see like the bloodshot eyes of the dog, and he's like, "Sup, bro?" He just loved the he just loved the vibe. Yeah, forgot, he's like, I'm forgot to Toy Story. <laughs> yeah, I love it. That is the story he swears. By. It's like, dude, nothing <laughs> His do. dog was just like, "Sup, guys." Sup, guys. <laughs> I love that. That's great. Oh, it is so good. Anyway, continue um, with the story. Here's the here's the part that I that I truly have issue with. All right, yeah. So let's rewind a little bit. Looking out the living room window to the door, there was the dog trying to open the door with its paws. Two paws wrapped around the brass doorknob standing on its hind legs. I thought that was weird, but wasn't really freaked out. Karen was. She opened the door and chased it off. Grandma came back later and Karen told her. Grandma didn't like what she heard. Me neither. I wouldn't like it either. Yeah, no, I, if I had seen that, I wouldn't be like, well, that's weird. I'd be like, that's freaky. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Got ready to sleep. We slept in the spare bedroom since it had two beds. One window with curtains open a little. We turned off the light, but there was sound coming from the top of the roof. Pitter-patter footsteps and scratching sounds and panting. It then sounded like it jumped off onto the large plastic water barrel they had. At first, we heard what sounded like barking. But as it grew louder, the other dogs seemed to be barking at something also. But all of a sudden... Something was running around the house barking, and it was, no dog, (laughs) nope, it wasn't. (laughs) The barking sounded human. A male voice barking like it knew, we knew, it wasn't a dog. (laughs) Just like, woof. Yeah, like, woof, 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 ruff, 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 (laughs) ruff. Thank you for leading. Just like that. Adding the W's and the R's and the A's. That's so fucking Panting again by the window. We started freaking out. Karen decided to, in my opinion, was stupid, open the curtains to look out. There was the stray dog on its hind legs looking into our bedroom, but this time it stunk and what I thought were two black holes in the neck. Another pair of eyes twinkled. Think of those ugly glossy spider eyes staring back at you and the paws were deformed looking hands with overgrown somewhat thick and sharp fingernails Jesus ha, well, hold on let me rewind hold, hold, right? on, hold on hold on <laughs> it, but this time it stunk I don't know how we have that information this time it stunk 
and what I thought were two black holes in the neck were eyes. Yeah. So it's like a hood, maybe. So like, like someone in a in a costume. So my understanding is like uh, the way that skinwalkers w work when they turn into an animal, they uh, the the pelt that they wear is what like it, it covers them and becomes the animal. So my guess is that he was like in half human, half animal form, and like his human eyes were probably where the neck of the animal would be. I'm imagining okay, that yeah. scene in Aliens uh, 4 when she goes into the room and sees, like, all the Ripleys. Yeah. Kill me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> all right. Again, both screaming and shutting the curtains closed, Grandma came running through the door and seeing it. First thing she did was grab ashes from the fireplace, load three shells into the shotgun from under the bed. Fuck yeah. Bless herself in Navajo <laughs> and went outside to shoot it. Yelling in Navajo about how the thing wasn't welcome there and to get the hell out of here for it to go linger somewhere else. Uh, That's them a both being grandma, traditional. First of all, I just. Uh, all right, all right. I feel like this story is literally someone who listened to this podcast, went back in time, and wrote <laughs> the story. Because it has all the tropes of what a skinwalker is, right? And then it even has, like, the way to kill a skinwalker. Right, trope. the ashes um, in the shotgun shell. Yeah. Right, right, right. Uh come over and put cedar in he prayed over everyone with cedar smoke and an eagle feather blessed the place made us eat bitter herbs called eagle's gull or something and gave me an arrowhead apparently i need to carry it for protection and a little pouch called corn pollen seems to work pretty well <laughs> great How does she man know? Said that of i have no probably I have hasn't clue. probably hasn't seen a skinwalker since you know you know what that's true that's true it's true it also keeps away tigers and uh uh aliens hobos yeah. Yeah. The medicine man said that the dog was a skinwalker, which in Navajo is a long word, but I'll call them Yoshis. Okay. <laughs> Great. The body of a stray dog, which was killed by the skinwalker, made an illusion so we wouldn't know it wasn't a real dog. He also said that Yoshi Yoshis tend to harm people by using some sort of human bone straw to spit at someone. Think spitballs only deadlier <laughs> and get human bones on uh, into them. Doctors can't detect it, but the medicine, medicine man said uh, that day they pulled a piece of human skull out of Grandma's right shoulder. Pretty big, about two inches long, one centimeter thick. What? It was Whoa. real because we watched them pull it out of out of her. That was intense. So that's like the corpse what? powder she's talking about. So they for some a reason it was like a skull. dart. He shot a dart. At, like how Grandma get hit with the eye of something? She went. She ran. <laughs> out, okay. She ran out there to shoot that fucking. Yeah, she thing. went out there, man. She ran out there to confront him with a handful of ash and three shotgun shells. Like, and a, he was like, <laughs> and spit a thing at her as she came at him. I would. Yeah, I guess. I Not mean, bro. <laughs> there's there's like a lot of details in this story, but there's also like important details missing. Well, if, and I think this is if if we had ignoring. Let's take a minute. Ignore the supernatural elements. Right. right? Mm -hmm. Just look at the three stories we had. Yes. The first story is like, my grandmother is superstitious. I'm not superstitious, but she believes in some stuff. And I went to go visit her, and she said that this thing's watching her, and like it was scary, but uh, then she moved. Like, it's an okay, scary story, but there's a lot of details missing, yeah, right? Yeah. The second story has details. It has like a buildup. It has more details, but doesn't present too many details, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. it, it gives you enough information that it seems believable. This story that I just read is literally a play-by-play -play of what the list we went through of how you would describe a skinwalker. Right. Yeah. Right? Yep. And so, and so thus it becomes less believable. So all I'm saying is, if we can do anything for you, listener right now, if you would like to create a fake story about a skinwalker, please go with number two. A solid story with some details like, I was in my backyard, which happens to be located and give us like, a good description, and then mention the thing coming to get you, but then, like, don't give us, like, but then I took shotgun shells and dipped them in ash and shot it at him, but it turns out, like, don't do that. Grandma don't became that. an action hero and ran outside yeah. with a shotgun. Also, we live in modern day. If you see one of these things, take your phone out immediately and yeah, take Yeah, I think that's the, that's the biggest issue, I think, with all of supernatural beings at the moment, is that... People are like, uh, before it was my camera was shaky and I couldn't do this and it was dark. Now cameras can take photos in the dark. Mm -hmm. Now cameras are super high quality. Now you have, everyone has one on them. So there's no excuse not to attempt to. I, I guess the go-to is I was frozen in fear. I don't know. I just, there's yo, yo, catching up with. Let me just say, there are some pretty fucked up videos and images of skinwalkers out there. 
I agree. There are some fun ones out there. I, and I would I would recommend you guys. But the, the, the thing, with, as with most things paranormal on camera, is they're not super in focus or they're not like they're kind of far away. Um, they're hard to see, but there's some weird shit out there that even when looking at them, like I would like to have somebody look at this so they can tell me what's wrong with this video because I'm still not good enough to know if there's something that I can debunk in it. Yeah, there's some pretty... I mean, look, if you want to go scare the shit out of yourself, there's plenty of ways oh, to God. do that with skinwalkers. Yeah. YouTube is a great place to scare the hell out of yourself nowadays if you really oh want to. Oh my God. But that's what... YouTube was the incredible, I think, one of my favorite uh, starting points for Slenderman. Right? Yes. Even, even though everyone understands Slenderman's BS, the original videos, that viral video Marble stuff. Marble Hornets. Who's, oh, my God. Yeah, that stuff's fascinating. And it's very scary. Yeah. So I, I definitely think that the fear factor in these stories and using it to scare is real. Yes. And I think they make for fascinating stories. I just don't know how believable any of it is. But I think at a story level, like deep down inside, the fear that we all feel about being alone at night and seeing terrifying eyes yeah. or being out in the woods and then a dog just being there, right? It, it instills a fear that's like a primal fear in us that you should be afraid. Like, if you saw a dog in the woods, Damn right. that's that's terrifying. Damn right. It just the, the added idea that, that this is some sort of uh, evil character out to get you is something that I think is added to the mythos to make it... Uh, something that you can scare kids with, or it, it defines good versus bad, that kind of thing. Yeah, I agree. Uh, and I, I think a lot of it is rooted into mythology and gets muddled. If there is a truth, one of the cool things about last episode is there were a lot of people who were sharing their ghost stories in the comments. So if you have a skinwalker fucking story, or some the, the, or some footage, or a, yeah, or a hit picture. hit the subreddit up. We've got a subreddit up and running. Um, there's a ton of cool conversations happening there now. Drop your stories over there because I would love to read your personal hauntings or your personal skinwalker stuff if you got pictures videos that's a place to share it man because i will i will devour that stuff in a night easily uh it's really really cool and let's be respectful of the people who actually believe that they encountered these things and not yeah, of course hoax us please right so um that's skinwalkers man that's a that's a, a one hour blast through skinwalker lore and a couple of spooky stories that have to deal with skinwalkers um again i think we'll be getting into much more detail uh, once we do tackle Skinwalker Ranch, so that's going to be a future episode, even maybe a soon episode. We'll see. Uh, and uh, if you guys, again, um, stories, share them away. But I think that's going to wrap up Chiluminati Podcast Episode 2. Jesse, do you feel enlightened or at least educated now? I love the concept. I, I Like I said before, I think Skinwalkers are a very cool idea. It definitely, you're right, feels like the evil rival to a druid in yeah. like a D and D setting. I think it's very cool. I love the idea. I don't know that I believe that they're real, but I think in a mythological sense, you can add them to the, to the canon of fantastical creatures that define or digging into the lore behind skinwalkers and sort of what roles they play in, uh, the stories of yeah. the Navajo people. I the, think that'd be fascinating to look at. Navajo, I, I, I would love to do just a, an episode about Navajo lore in general because their lore is fucking cool. Like, it's all about nature and all this, you know, like the nature gods and stuff. It's really wild. I love it a lot. It's dope. Al Alex, what did you do? What about you? Did you know much about skinwalkers coming into this or not? I, I only knew about skinwalkers from what I listened to. Uh, there's an, a paranormal podcast that's pretty good. You guys should check out called astonishing legends okay and they like they like deep dive into topics over weeks and weeks and weeks sometimes and uh they you know they're a little bigger than us so they can like reach out and get some really cool guests on there sometimes uh which we can someday do you know yeah i, I, reached, out, I reached out to an author and he uh he wrote back to me uh That's but awesome. uh yeah but uh they they like talk to the people from skinwalker ranch and I was just, it was horrifying. It was like a, such a long episode and there was so much to chew on and it just like, you know, driving in the car is a very like, sort of like pensive time. And so, yeah. you know, you let your mind sort of like run wild with these ideas as you're listening to them and it just really captured me. But I, I, I had not heard about them before that. Cool. Yeah, uh, I would love to eventually do like a deep dive multi-part episode on something. Again, Skinwalker Ranch is a really good idea, I think, for, for our first one. But uh We'll leave it there. Um, if you guys, you know, enjoyed the episode, now I'm going to do the typical pimping stuff. If you listen to us on iTunes, you know, hit us with five stars. Leave a, 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 ra a rating and, and a 
a review up there that helps massively with brand new podcasts um, and any of the other stuff that you use. If you use Stitcher or Tuner or any of the other stuff, drop us a review there. Helps a great deal. Um, we appreciate the overwhelming support on the first episode. I really did not expect the amount of people who were into it to be into it on episode one. I figured it would be a little bit more of a build, but people are really into this shit, and I love it.